what happened to a paper money if you wash it? Usually nothing severe. It will not disintegrate it because technically it is not made out of paper like for example a newspaper does. Of course it can be damaged. But actually you can exchange the washed money according to the instruction of the central bank. So if you were laundering your money, then you have clean money. Today we're gonna talk about something that not allowed to do but you would wish you could if your pockets were filled with millions. So we're gonna talk about money laundering. Grab some coffee, you're watching Bench Avenue. But before we get started, subscribe to my channel and give this video a like, it means so much to me. Aww. At whose expense does the country live? Easy, at our expense. Our system is saturated with taxation. Somewhere they're acceptable and range from 13% to 20% of profit. In some countries, sometimes percentage can reach up to 60. Simplify it, we voluntarily and automatically every month give our honestly earned money to the state treasury. Yes, there is also a tax on purchases and sales and God knows what else. Today we will not go into these details and talk about taxes, but what to do with the money that you earn? Not really honestly. Like according to the law, you are obliged to pay tax. But if the money is earned in an illegal way, you will be sent to prison. You also cannot not pay taxes and simply use it. You will go to a prison for a tax evasion. So what you can do? For this, smart people came up with money laundering. So what is money laundering? This is withdrawal of criminally obtained money from the shadow to use it legally and everywhere. In simple terms, a human trafficker or let's say a Russian oligarch has billions of cash accumulated under his pillow. He cannot put it in the bank. The tax authority become immediately interested in them. Buying a private jet or let's say a yacht is also impossible. It turns out that you have a lot of money, there is uh, no place to put it, but you can't use it. So you have to organize something like, for example, you win a lottery or invest them in a legal business, but so that their traces are lost. That is called money laundering. Is this legal? No. Will you be punished for that? Yes, but as we all know, forbidden fruit is the sweetest. But why it is called money laundering and not some kind of legally illegal investment? There is a legend. It is believed that this term originated in the 20s in the US thanks to the world famous Al Capone. We all know that his fortune were not earned by a honest labor and under the close attention of the police he could not spend it. Therefore, Al Capone opened a huge network of laundries with very low prices. It was very difficult to track the real number of clients, which means that any income could be written down, which means that dirty money can be thrown into in general turnover of the legal business. This is where the term of money laundering came from. But actually not Al Capone, but Mayor Lansky is considered as a true king of money laundering. And he was one of the creator of Las Vegas. He mixed dirty money into the turnover of his casino, simulating the loss of clients. He also carried out his frauds with banks. Anonymous accounts were opened in Swiss banks in which dirty money were transferred. Then loans were taken out there, which were repaid with funds from these accounts. During such machinations, Lansky could calmly prove the origins of his money. Of course, over time, these schemes only get better. For example, Jos Gonzalo Rodriguez Gacha, known as El Mexicano, spent his money from selling drugs through Capital Bank. The account in this bank was registered to a company which name was Sonal, owned by Colombians. Colombia, unlike the United States, was not interested in the origin of the money. The 
essence of this scheme was that duty dollars were exported to Colombia, where they were exchanged for local peso. The exchange company was registered on the name of a certain Carlos Molino. Next, the laundered dollars were returned to the United States in cash and placed in the account of a reputable company. From this company, our gangster received various checks signed by its director Carlos Molino, allegedly for various needs, including the purchase of pesos for transfer to the drug mafia. In total, approximately 400 million dollars passed this way, which today amounts to more than a billion US dollars. But what does money laundering look like today? Take a pen and write it down. Do not think. Modern money laundering methods usually involve three stages. Accommodation. At this stage, you need to introduce illegal money into the legal financial system, but do it in such a way that no one could question where the money came from. More often, this is achieved by breaking a large amount into the many small ones. The next stage is layering. Here, you need to layer in on top of each other as many operations as possible to the flow of money from one state of aggregation to another. The more confusing the path of money become, the better and more difficult it is to determine its real source. The last stage is integration. The money cleared of traces of the criminal activity must somehow to be returned to your account in some seemingly legal way. Okay, but let's talk about real examples. For example, video games can be used to launder money. Criminals buy game currency using stolen data from other people's bank cards and then sell it to players for real money. Following video games, cryptocurrency appeared and there is plenty of ways to roam around. Some people don't bother too much, they just sell their dirty cash buying digital money. Here are privacy coins and crypto mixers that make it impossible to track the connection between the source and recipient of funds. Due to rapid growth of cryptocurrency exchange rates, it is not difficult to explain how you get rich so quickly. But still, the most prestigious for laundering money is due doing that throughout the art that is best suited for these purposes, because it is impossible to objectively determine the exact price of a painting or sculpture. And you can store masterpieces in duty-free warehouses. This is even better than in a bank, because no one needs to give an account of what exactly is stored there and for what amount. And by selling this work of art, you can launder in your money. Of course, today no one comes to auction with a bag full of money. Measure officials from countries where corruption is rampant, mafiosi and billionaires who earn their fortunes through not entirely legal means have lawyers, proxies and shell companies. Here is the simplest scheme for money laundering through art. You have 10 million dollars. You know it's not clean and you don't want to pay taxes on it. A patent is drawn to order, which the expert estimates co-accidentally to be worth 10 million dollars. An unselfish businessman donates a patent to a museum, for which as a benefactor he is exempt from paying tax on the value of the painting. Or here is the other one. Let's say Bill has 10 million dirty money and Jack has a painting. Bill secretly buy painting from Jack for this amount of money. Lately, Bill gives this painting back to Jack so that he can sell it to someone. Jack sells this painting to, let's say, Anna, but a discount for a 7 million. Jack keeps only a modest 10 15 percent for himself, and the rest goes back to Bill. Yes, Bill lost a little, but now this money is legal and he can use it. When playing for big, businessmen often use real estate to launder its money. A special feature of the American real estate market is that in order to purchase property for cash below a certain amount, neither identification of the buyer nor other reputational checks of companies or individuals is required. Thus, scammers use shell companies to buy real estate by cash 
and then resell it, often at an inflated price, and thereby receive clean money. Today, all these money laundering schemes are so intertwined with each other. For example, you can buy an apartment, let's say, in Dubai for cryptocurrency. Or what is NFT worth? It includes digital money and digital art. Then you pass everything through a crypto mixer and that's it. You're a billionaire and don't owe anyone anything. But let's not forget that laundering money means playing with fate. Today you're on top of the world and tomorrow you have nothing. Subscribe to my channel, there is still a lot of interesting things waiting for you. Give this video a like and thank you for hanging out. I'll see you very soon. Bye.